Hello, everybody. It is February 8, um, 2023, and uh, welcome to Change the Shed. It is uh, good to be here. I am in, uh, I'm not at home, obviously. I am in uh, West, the, I'm in Virginia. I'm in the western side of the state of Virginia. And hopefully you can hear me. I don't have my normal setup, so we're playing with the technology. It looks like um, a bunch of you have remembered today. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, Harold is here from Canada and Barbara from San Diego and Linda from Scotland. And Sybil is from here from Switzerland and Paula from Vermont, and Julia from Germany. Um, Barbara, you has, Barbara has questions about online classes. Barbara, just please, if you could just please email me. My website is tapestryweaving.com, and let's see if I can turn that on for you. There's my website, tapestryweaving.com. If you would just email me from there, under the Let's Talk, we can get you set up. Olivia's here from Ireland, Judy from British Columbia, Julia from Germany, Christine, Canada, Betsy, Kansas City, Missouri. Um, a gray day in central Massachusetts, and Indianapolis, and SoCal, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, the, Anne is here from the UK, Bridget's from Ireland. Gosh, so many of you from other countries. It's wonderful you're here. Victoria's here from California. Um, Carolyn from the UK. And uh, Renee from Massachusetts. Um, welcome, everybody. Gail's from Colorado. I'm going to miss some of you here, but... Um, I'm glad um, whoever that is on their first change the shed, welcome. I don't actually see you have a name on your thing, but um, from Hawaii and Claudia is here from Venice and Maryland and California. Marlene is here from Texas and Kate from Idaho. Nancy from Maryland and Jessica is in Illinois right now. Glad you're all here. I hope you can hear me. I don't have my normal... Um, um, microphone, but, oh, Paula, everybody's asking about this shawl. It is, if you contact Longmont Yarn Shop in Longmont, Colorado, the owner of that shop designed this shawl. I don't know what it's called. I should have looked it up the last time someone asked me. It's special yarn as you're knitting. Every time you come to the white, you do this special um, little stitch. It's really fun. So um, if you just contact Longmont Yarn Shop, they will set you up with uh, what the pattern is. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know what it's called. Um, not one for remembering the name of knitting patterns. I apologize for that. Uh, yes. Um, Donna from Nova Scotia, currently in Mexico. That sounds fun, Donna. Very cool. Um, so I am in the, um, right next to the Appalachian Trail. So here I was the other day. Blue blaze in it on the AT. Um, the blue marks are where the Appalachian Trail is. I think other trails use blue marks too, but it's fun to be back on the Appalachian Trail a little bit. And um, here's a view of the um, Appalachians. Appalachian Mountains, very old mountains. The Rocky Mountains are young compared to these mountains. So. I wanted to do a little bit of weaving about this place and these mountains and uh, threw together a little four salvage piece which um, with hand spun. So I'm a little not, I'm still in the testing phase as you'll see. So uh, hello Sarah from Idaho, glad you are also here. Um, I'm trying to use my cell phone here for a second camera, so let's see if it works. Let me take this down. Here is, oh no. Oh, there we go, okay. Oh no. I might be in trouble, y'all. Um, hang on. I may 
have actually screwed this up. Let's uh, try that again. Oh, maybe. I considered bringing my webcam and did not, and I might regret it, but if I, um, gosh, all right, I'm gonna leave it like that. I had it better before, but I don't know what's happening. Um, so let's, look at this little design and um jessica the name of the yarn shop is longmont l-o-n-g-m-o-n-t yarn shop uh so this little design is for four salvage weaving and i brought this is the loom i brought on this trip it is the um little tiniest pipe loom that i have i know 400 of you are going to ask i don't make them i don't know how i it was given to me by Michael Rohde. He gives them to students in one of his classes. And I don't have information for you about where to get the materials or how to build one, but I'm sure if you search around, you could do that. Please don't bother Michael about it. He doesn't sell them. <laughs> um, it's brass, I believe, and I think it's eighth inch brass, if that helps. Uh, but I know literally many, many of you will ask after seeing this video <laughs> how to make one of those. So I'm telling you, I don't know. Um, all right, so I don't know that I can, oh, I can move that around. I can't make it any bigger, so I'm sorry about that. I am doing the best I can with this hacked up technology. So this little design, I've got a four salvage warp on here. It's like this and this. And here's a little design about the Appalachian, Appalachian, oh Lord, I should have practiced that. Um, the AT little um, hills, and I'm going to use some hand spun in three different colors. So I've been doing the spinning for this. And um, I'll show you what I've been spinning. I got this braid at the... Let's see, it is BFL and Sick. It's Silk. It's a Sweet Georgia braid. So I got it at um, a yarn shop in Roanoke called, <laughs> you would think I would remember that, Wool, Wool Something. Any of you who have been to Roanoke, pop it in there. Um, this is a lovely built braid with Silk and BFL. It's quite soft, but I spun it up here. And I think it's the perfect color for the center of this design. It has browns and blues. And of course, when you spin those, they become gray. So I want to use that for the middle of this design here. And then I have, uh, here's another braid. I don't know what this is. This is um, from Into the World. They do these minis. And um, it's fairly soft. It may also be BFL. I don't know. Um, but I'm going to put this on one side again, a little bit different blues and um, earth colors. And then the last color I want is from, thank you, Marina, Wool Workshop. That's exactly it. Wool Workshop in Roanoke. Beautiful place. They have some spinning stuff and I really loved going there. So that was fun. If you're in Roanoke, go to the Wool Workshop. They had these locks, which are from Wool Song Farm. They're Cotswold locks and her colorway is called um, Pask Flower. But this is a local Virginia farm, and so it was fun to get these locks. I'm pretty sure these are rainbow dyed. You can see they're sort of teal and purple, and the locks are changing color down the lock, so they you know, clearly weren't immersion dyed. They were um, rainbow dyed, I think. Anyway, I wanted to use those also for one of the colors. Cotswold is very different from BFL um, in terms of the fiber. It is a much thicker micron count. And so um, it's fun to spin. I've got one um, spindle full of it, which 
I just finished spinning and I was ready to whack it right on the loom because I often do that. I just don't even um, put the yarn in water. But this is a little unruly because it's a long staple and a much thicker micron count than the you know BFL or what these other yarns are. I don't think this yarn is going to um, work well unless I give it a bath. So my plan for that now, as of 10 minutes ago, is to use my little, this is a, my travel nitty naughty, and I'll wind it off and um, give it a bath and whack it a little bit, and then it will be ready to weave. So I'll probably put that color maybe on this side. Uh, we'll see how it goes. So, oh good, my camera is totally frozen. I don't know if this is gonna work, you all. Maybe a question and answer thing today. Um, dang it. Uh, swear it was working an hour ago, but it is not working now. So I am really sorry. I'll try it again. I think it keeps going to sleep and I don't know how to fix that. Well, I do know how to fix that if I get into the settings, but. Um, so this is just uh, the BFL. This is 10 ends per inch on a fringeless warp, and it is, um, I don't actually have enough light here to see this very well. So I'll probably mess this up. Is this right? Yeah. So I'm making these, I'm going to make these uh, little diagonal shapes and I can start with this one in the middle. I have to start with the shape in the middle because these are built over that shape. You can see I got a little too much twist. So let's add the other color just for fun. Um, this one I'm adding is this colorway again I don't know it might be cheviot but it feels fairly uh, it's not too short the staple but it feels fairly soft so I have wound off a little bit when I wind these off I pull a length off on my fingers and then wind it from the other end so that when I get to the end of this bobbin it will match the color that's on the beginning of this uh, and that's just a little trick when I'm doing these hand spun things. Let's see if I can. Now let's see if I can get this in the right shed. This is going. Is this the shed I just wove? Yep. Perfect. I know I started this one on this side. So remembering that we're going to go in the opposite direction. Get the beginning of that. You can start the tapestry so that it plays well, it's the right width, you'll be better off. All right, what did I do there? I did something. The beginning of, sometimes I am challenged at the beginning of the, just the very first pick. Okay, I just had the wrong shed, sorry. <laughs> really having some trouble seeing this. After that, it should be fine. Just every other shed. The Traveling Knitty Naughty is made by Katrinkles. They make a bunch of cool knitting stuff. And their little, this thing, this Travel Knitty Naughty, it makes a small skein. I like it for um, traveling and um, anytime I'm using hand spun. 
I don't bring it on the backpacking trips, but I bring it otherwise because it folds flat and easy to bring. Jillian Moreno taught me about their things. If you're a knitter, you've probably seen Katrinkle's um, stuff in knit shops. They do a lot of um, stitch markers and stuff. It's laser cut wood. Is this still working? It looks like it's still going. I have a feeling it... Okay. I feel like if I mess with it now and then maybe it won't cut off. Um, I don't have a port to put that on, sorry. Um, it's not bad, I just can't. Emily's trying to help me with a light, but I just, uh, it's partly my eyes. I just, um, I could turn up the, can turn up the lights all the way. Um, so yes, yeah, Sarah, Sarah asks if I need a headlamp. I do need a headlamp. I actually have a headlamp. I always have a headlamp but I don't know where it is at the moment. Um, Jessica, no, this loom is made of eighth inch pipe. You heard it right, one eighth. Pipe is measured by the internal diameter, so it looks bigger than that, but I am reasonably sure it's actually one eighth inch pipe. Okay. I use uh, tapestry bobbins always for this hand spun because I'm not as good a spinner as someone like Sarah is. <laughs> so um, anyway, it's also fuzzy and I need to control it. So I mean, of course you'd use a tapestry bobbin. What else would you use for hand spun? So <laughs> Barbara asked if the TSA people ever comment on the stuff I have in my luggage. They don't. Occasionally they do decide to... Um, take a look at my checked luggage or my carry-on luggage. And, uh, is that, oh, yep, camera died again. Um, alrighty then, this is fun. Okay. Uh, I was, uh, I was not going to do a change the shed while traveling and, um, oh, that's just going to blow it right out. Um, yeah, so a headlamp would be great, except that, ooh, I think maybe not. Um, it is, I don't know how to turn it off. I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> I think maybe today is not the day to do change the shed. Um, the TSA people love my luggage. They um, do sometimes leave me love notes that they have opened the suitcase and they've never actually taken anything. I have found that um, one thing, if you have in your carry-on especially, but probably also in your checked luggage, full cones of cotton seine twine. Apparently those are so dense that they look like liquid. So I have been pulled aside several times for, sometimes I'll just stick a cone in my carry-on bag because they're so heavy and my luggage is always over. When I'm going to teach, the luggage is always over the amount that it's supposed to be. So I'll put the you know one pound cone of seine twine in my carry-on bag and then TSA wants to have a chat with me. The handspin is single, Linda. It's uh, and that is for color reasons. I put this warp on last night and it looks like I didn't get it exactly spaced perfectly. The handspun is singles and I'm doing that for color reasons. I want the color to shift. 
So what I want is for, this is starting with brown, but this color goes to gold and blue. And I want that to shift as I'm weaving up. And if I apply it, it won't do that. Um, I want the color change. And that means that the weft is too thin for this set. The doubled warps help and the It's a set of 10. I probably should use two or three of these singles at this set. I'm not the best spinner in the world. And all I have with me when I travel are these little, um, these little Turkish spindles. One of these Turkish spindles. And it's very light and it's real easy to make nice thin yarn. Probably many of you could make a fat single on a tiny light spindle, but I am not one of those people. I just need the single to be about twice the size that it is right now. This is just a little tapestry diary piece though. It doesn't matter. It's just a piece about where I am right now. It's okay. It's okay if I have to fudge with the materials a little bit. All right, I think this is the last. Although it'd be more interesting to watch if it was thicker because I'm gonna spend all, all day weaving this tiny little bit. Uh, I think I need a little more tension on this loom too. Um, <laughs> thanks Susan your calming influence she said don't freak out I was teaching in Taos last month and so I missed um you know, I did two change the sheds earlier in the month, but haven't had one since like, it's been about a month. So I wanted to get one in, but I'm here in Virginia for about two weeks. So it was either tried in Virginia or wait longer. Maybe it doesn't matter. Um, Oh, that's too bad, Betsy. She had TSA once broke the yarn from her knitting in the luggage. Um, it's weird that they would open luggage for knitting, but I definitely had friends have their knitting taken away from them, especially flying internationally. So, all right. Of course, I want diagonals, and I'm trying to figure out how to make them somewhat straight. This is going to be one of those experimental tapestries. Oh, I'm having a good time today. I don't think, let me just see if I can change the camera settings so that it doesn't. Actually, I'm not going to. Um, yeah. I'm not going to be able to find that. I knew myself. Well, yes, Jessica, I also ply with my drop spindles. The issue isn't plying, the issue is that if I ply two strands together, then I lose the colors that I want. So, if I ply the yarn, I will lose the tapestry effect that I'm looking for. I know that this might seem kind of nuts, but it's fun.
moving that blue one over. It's also a guessing game of, um, I brought a bunch of locks with me also to spin for a project like this or another project. And uh, it's always a guessing game how long, if you want the color to change a certain amount as you're weaving, it's sort of a guessing game of how much to spin of each color. Of course, you can break it and, you know, move to a new color as you're weaving it, but it won't have quite the same graded effect if you break the yarn. It's surprising how subtle the color change is when you spin for color like this. And if you break the yarn and go to another part of it, you'll have a, a line in your weaving. Just like you do if you change to a different color yarn and you're making a gradation. All right. These colors look pretty together. I really wanted to, sh to do these locks, but um, I feel they will be more successful if I give them a bath, so. I'll let you know, they, the Cotswold reminds me of um, the Icelandic fleece. I was playing with in Iceland last year. It's already been almost a year since that Icelandic residency. Seems crazy. I hope you all have been weaving or doing something this winter. A whole bunch of you are doing the tapestry discovery box which has been really fun. Those of you in Design Solutions, there's a live thing this afternoon. I sent you an email. That's my design class. Okay, let's step this one over. Can you even see that? Look, it'll let me zoom in. So you can sort of see that. I can't see it, but you probably can. I'll be back. I forgot to say this, but... I'll be back in a couple weeks. I'll be home in my own studio, so I think it's whatever two weeks is from today. I'm sure, pretty sure it's on the schedule on my website at tapstreetweaving.com. Here's another challenge. If I make the angles, these are almost the same angle maybe, but if you make them go at different rates, you also have to figure out how to make that happen, which is harder with this thin yarn, because I'm not really counting sequences and it's not super even. Hey, Melissa. Melissa is here from Bob and Boy. She's right down the road from me right now in Asheville, I think. Anyway, Melissa made this other bobbin I'm using. This is one of, oh, sorry, you all. Um, I think uh, if I do this again, I will bring, um, my webcam. Anyway, Melissa made this lovely bobbin, one of my very favorites. Uh, it's a skinny mini, and I love, I really like the metal points. She makes them without the metal points too. They're fabulous.
That is Bob and Boy. If you're, I was talking about Melissa um, Ellison Dewey who made this, and she's at Bob and Boy. So if you just Google that, you will undoubtedly find her and her husband are wood turners and they fix all the things. I think you can fix anything, right, Melissa? Uh, all the weaving equipment, anything wood, I'm pretty sure they could fix. Um, cool. Some of you said that you're finishing up um, Intro to Tapestry and the Discovery Box. Uh, good. Thanks, Judy. Uh, my schedule says that the next Change the Shed is on the 22nd. I think that's correct. All right. Well, this would be nice to see the gradation um, happening, but we're not going to get that far today. So you'll have to watch my Instagram or my blog for more pictures. Maybe I will take this little loom up to the mountains and give it a whirl. It's supposed to be in the 60s the rest of the week, so it's not like Colorado. I always, I frequently forget that I can just slide my shed stick. The top of this loom has an open shed rod, so I can slide my shed stick right in there. Yeah, super unimpressive, but fun anyway. All right, so you all, um, any other questions about, I don't know, I guess I'm mostly just playing with this stuff today. So uh, I'll just keep going for a few more minutes. Going to, let's see. Let's bring this over one more time. I'm actually in Virginia. I'm working remotely. Um, I'm not here on vacation. I am here because we have some friends with dogs who need taken care of for about a week and a half. And they used to live where we live in Colorado. And one of them is a sick old guy and he needed somebody to come and stay with him who knew him. So we're here to take care of good old Carl. And make sure any doggy emergencies are taken care of. Okay, that angle is going to be, here's an angle question. I think this angle is going to be too steep, or not steep enough. Oh. Nope, it might have been a good guess. Okay. Paula, this is uh, 10, about 10 ends per inch. That was, at least that was my intention when I put it on the loom. This yarn is too fine for 10 ends per inch as we were talking about earlier. Um, but that's how it is. I'm using this hand spun because I want the color and I wanted to use fiber from this area for this little tapestry diary piece. So you'll notice that the warps are doubled. It's a fringeless for salvage piece, which is, uh, 
the technique that Sarah Sweat taught me. And thank you, Sarah. She and I did a class called Fringeless. Um, Sarah's teaching how to do this technique and I became an avid student of Fringeless for salvage weaving. The cool thing about it is that, um, so the cool thing about it <laughs> is that, uh, let's get this back and then I can tell you what's cool about it. Um, the cool thing about it is, as you can see on this loom, here's the fringeless part. And this is a fairly short loom. This, um, sorry about that. The loom is a lot shorter than I would normally use. I do like a longer pipe loom, but um, this is not bad. I have a shed the whole way. So the weaving will be right here. And when it comes off, it will have no hems or anything like that. But I have all this extra warp that I can continue to get a shed as I'm weaving instead of the methods of four salvage weaving where you don't get a shed at all. You have to use a needle and um, the last of the weaving is quite difficult. So um, anyway, that's my plug for fringeless for salvage. And also Sarah is so much fun. So Glad you're here, Sarah. And that we did the fringe list class. Not sure I've laughed as much as I laughed that week when we shot it. I think, as I said a few minutes ago, I feel like I need a little more tension on this loom. The brass is a little soft, so I'm always hesitant to... That's better. And I'm going to fill in with this blue before I lose my step. Oh, hang on. It's like I need to keep going. <laughs> You're sweet, Sarah. She said the class was fun to make. And that I made it fun. I don't know about that, but. We had another old dog when we made that class. I think Sirius, Sarah's dog, Sirius is in that. Um, oh, is there a float there? Nope. Uh, was in that fringeless class. And Sirius has since moved on but moved on the i don't know why they call it the rainbow bridge i'm not really like that um seems weird uh i don't know sirius has moved on to greener pastures and one day soon carl will also but in the meantime he is having a great time he has had a lot of uh walks and sniffs and is living his best life I only wish the same for all of us when we get that old. Yeah. Um, Suzanne, that's a good, uh, sorry, Judy. Um, the dowel at the top of the loom is to give you a bigger shed. So um, sort of but not really the dowel actually because this dowel is bigger than the top of the loom that's on purpose i think on most of my pipe looms when i do fringe lists um, i'm using a, a i have a bigger loom the the um, pipes are bigger and the dowels i'm using to get the shed right are smaller so i need two of them anyway this just makes the shed happen because it's fringeless and the every warp is doubled if you don't have a stick like that in there the shed won't be right oh yeah sarah i remember that she said uh about sirius he was such a great dog kept lying down right in the middle of your equipment so we'd be filming something and sirius's little um i think this is in a few of the videos his little nails clicking on the tile or the cement 
would come over and then he would plot down right between the camera and wherever Sarah was working. It was fun. Sirius was a good dog. All right, everybody. I don't know. As you can see, I've, I have not woven a lot, but you probably can't see the colors happening in this blue, but it's already quite pretty. Um, this will be really, I think, a nice mix because it's going to go to this rusty blue color. And there's some lighter values in there, and that's that will be pretty. It will remind me of the Appalachian Mountains. And I think that's what Marina maybe is talking about, too. Blue, yes, the name for Marina was talking about the name for the Appalachian, the Blue Ridge Mountains. Um means blue so that's uh, lovely and yeah this picture here's the picture um, they do indeed look blue at least this time of year the trees are all of course still um, there's no leaves on the trees but they are definitely blue yes um, thanks for coming you all today I am um, just wanted to give it a shot and see what doing change the shed on the road is like and now I know that if I'm gonna do it I should bring my webcam uh, and maybe a light I hope that you're all doing well and having fun I'll be back in two weeks um, I'll probably write a blog post about this piece and the trip and I don't know uh, Carl maybe <laughs> so have a really great week and enjoy all of the things that you're doing and the weaving. And if you're in um, the Tapestry Discovery Box or the Design Solutions class, there's some live things this week. So make sure you check in and I will see you there. They have good internet here in Western Virginia. So... We shouldn't have a problem with that. Awesome. Um, I'll have a better report on this tapestry. And maybe I'll show it to you in two weeks. Maybe it will be mostly done by then so you can see the um, grading that happens with the singles yarn. All right, I'm going to go uh, get some more things done and take those dogs for a hike. So thanks for coming, everybody. And I'll see you in two weeks. <laughs>